boom. Now in code, th this is essentially one line of code to be able to do something like that. Um, animator dot set trigger def. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> animator dot set bool. Walk is true. That's how you set, what I was clicking, that's how you do it in code. It's literally that easy. But I like this preview in here because you can kind of test out all your animations and see how they work. So we, we go to death, when we're done with death, we exit and go back to idle. And so it's a really slick way of doing it now that's been added to Unity 5. Pretty cool? Nice. Pretty cool? All right, let's look at, um, we kind of covered this on the animation state behaviors. We have this new any state and exit state. Uh, we are getting short on time here, so I actually want to run over to you. Yep. Because you've got some cool stuff to show on audio, which is I do. super, super important on any game. Absolutely, unless it's a silent game. Ha. Wow. <laughs> it was a late night. Well, it was late night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, audio for version 5 got a major, major over overhaul. Pretty much uh, rewritten from the ground up. We now have a full bus system here. Uh, you can see I've got a bunch of different sliders set up. And uh, just because we are running out a, a little bit over time, I'm just gonna go and blow all this away and just show you how we can set this all up from scratch. Now, when you have, a, uh, when you have an audio source, uh, so I've just got a couple set up here, like my background music, as soon as you apply an audio clip to a game object, this, this whole pane here automatically populates. And you can see right now is that it's outputting to nowhere right now because I've, I've deleted it. I've deleted the audio mixer, so I could set that back to none. Um, and you can see there's some other settings here, like we actually want this to loop because it's background music. And I can change a few, a few parameters here. Uh, but if you create a mixer, you can do a whole lot more with this. So what I'll do is just create a new mixer. And I won't call it Mix Master Mark. I'll just call it <laughs> Mixer, Mixer, whatever. That looks fine. And by default, it creates a master slider right here. So obviously, that's your, your, master, uh, your master audio level. From here, I'll go ahead and create a couple more groups. So I'll add a group. We'll call this one Background like so, and then I'll create another, and we'll call this one sound effects. Now before I had it broken down into each effect was separate, uh, I'm just gonna show it to you on one effect here. Now, right now, this hierarchy isn't flat, so the master will control these two. Background, because sound effects is actually underneath or parented to background, if I lower my background volume, my sound effects volume is gonna lower itself as well. I won't actually see the slider move, but it will, we will lose that volume. So what you wanna do is grab your sound effects layer or your uh, object and just kinda of drag it above into the master, so now you have a flat hierarchy like this. This will make it so that master will, of course, affect both of them, but now sound effects is independent and background is independent. Now I need to tell it what audio do I want to pipe into these, because if I just hit play right now, you know, nothing's gonna happen here because it doesn't know what, what the background is just because I call the background doesn't, uh, doesn't tell it anything. So what I'm gonna do is click on my background music uh, game object. And now I'm gonna set the output here. Just gonna click on this. And now you can see the mixer that I set up. Uh, there's all my different uh, buses right there. So I'm gonna send the, the background music to my background bus like so. And now if I press play, check it out. Now we've got our background music right there. So I'm gonna stop this, I'm gonna show you one other quick thing. We've got all these coins. If I select one of these coins, we also have an audio track on here, just a little coin drop sound. Uh, again, this one also needs an output channel. So I'll click on this little icon right there, that little bullseye looking thing. Click on sound effects like so. And now if I press play, I have my background, or background music there. And if I walk over a coin, bling. Oops, I'm making sound effects that aren't even happening. <laughs> You're, you're, you go. are your own mixer, mix master. Mixer. Oh, you know what? You guys can't hear. Can you guys even hear my sound? Oh, geez, I'm sorry, guys. I wasn't sure if you could hear it. That's better. Hopefully you can hear that. So I had my audio muted. Pfft. It's always good to give an audio demo with muted audio. <laughs> the best way to do it. Anyway, I think you can visually see what's going on. But uh, some other cool things that we can do here, you know, now that we've set this bus system up, is I can start to add all types of different sound effects. So if I click on, uh, or filters rather. So if I click on add, I've got all these different filters that I could add. You can actually write your own with C++. Uh, that way they're nice and cross-platform, but you know, I could put on here something like a pitch shift, uh, press play now, and I can go and just start to tweak the, uh, the slider here. And I notice, you know, for those of you that know Unity, you know you can't make changes in play mode, right? Well, with audio, you now can. So I have a button here for edit and play mode. I've got another one right here. When you click that, you can now actually make these changes, and these changes get picked up. So these actually get saved, which is different than, than uh, you know, usually when you're working with Unity. That's why I have my play mode tint 
Have you talked about Playmo Playmo tint? Yep. Okay, good. So I got my Playmo tint set to uh, blue. Adam had his to kind of a weird green. And here you can see I'm changing the pitch, uh, which is changing the audio quite a bit on the background track, which is pretty neat. Um, some other things that we can do is I'll just show you one other quick uh, quick little effect is something called ducking. Uh, ducking is going to allow us to take any audio track and actually lower or raise the volume based on when another sound effect plays. So think of like a, uh, you walk into a boss level, you wanna drop the audio level down when you get near the boss so that, uh, or at least the background music so you can maybe hear the boss talk, but you don't know the length of time that the boss is gonna talk. Maybe you're doing four or five different languages and they all have various lengths of time. So you just basically, basically make this an automatic effect. So what I'm gonna do is add something called a duck. So basically you're gonna put the, uh, the effect on the track that you wanna actually lower. So I'm gonna click add. I'm gonna add a duck volume. And that comes up with, uh, with this uh, uh, controller right here. You can play with these quite a bit, but something easy to do is just to make it really, really noticeable, set your threshold all the way to the left, your ratio all the way to the right, and that's basically gonna make the background volume pretty much plunge uh, almost immediately as soon as something triggers it. So what I want to trigger it is the sound effects of picking up a coin. So when I pick up a coin, the background music is gonna fall. So to do that, you also have to add something on the, back, on the uh, sound effect track. So I'm gonna click Add here, and I'm gonna add a sender. And what I'm gonna send is the volume of this track to my duck volume, and if it detects that volume, detects that, that sound effect, it's gonna drop that volume. So you have to come over here now. Once I added send here, it appears here in my inspector. Change this to duck volume. And the one other thing you need to do is adjust this slider here. And you can see that when I move this slider, it actually moves this slider here. So you can actually do this in both places. And I'm gonna show you a neat little, neat little tip. It's kind of hidden, but on our little uh, tiny hamburger icon right there, I believe that's called, if you click on that, there's a little checkbox here for show bus connections. And I love this because it shows a nice little connection there, which I don't know, I think that's neat. More anyway, cool. yeah, a little visual, a little cue that something's going on there. So now when I walk over to my sound effect, to my, uh, to my coin sound, bling, the, uh, the background music will fade, like so. So background music will fade, and uh, since we can't hear it here, hoping that you guys hear it on your end. That is correct. So which is cool because if the background music is too loud, you don't really hear the coin. Uh, I think we we're talking about some other cool use cases, like maybe if you run inside of the cave, uh, and when you get inside of the cave, um, you, you wanna trigger something off so that duck volume kinda goes down. Um, play some other ambient sound effect while you're in a cave, and then when you come out, uh, crank up that background music. So all sorts of cool little effects like that. Yeah, one other quick thing is snapshots. Uh, these are really simple to set up. Snapshots just allow you to set your levels to predefined states. Um, so here I can just quickly show you add a snapshot, and this is literally a one line of code to trigger it. So you could say like uh, uh, BG low, something like that, add maybe one more, uh, BG cranked, whatever. So here I could say, okay, well, whenever I'm invoking this snapshot, I want my background volume way up, and I want my sound effects volume low, here I want the background volume low and my sound effects high. This is quite a bit different than a duck. A duck is, you know, happens immediately. It happens anytime there, that uh, sound comes through the sound effect channel. This one here is a little bit more scripted, if you will. You could say, you know what, when I get to this part of the level, I want these values set. And it can be on all these sliders. You can have 100 sliders, and you can also choose the time that it takes them. So it can be a nice fade. It's not an immediate thing. You'll actually see the, uh, the, the, uh, the fader slow or uh, drop. So actually, if I press play and edit in play mode, click on my different um, snapshots, you can see those volume levels change. And again, through some simple scripting, you can change the... Um, Switch between what's, what's the active snapshot. What the active snap is, cool. correct. Very so there you go, little, uh, just a little primer on audio for version five. Very cool. All right, I think that brings us to the end of this particular module. We will be back shortly, and we're gonna be talking about coding and AI up next, so thank you very much, and we'll see you shortly. PBR? Oh, we're at... Okay. <laughs> Welcome back yet again. Thanks for sticking with us, or welcome if you're just joining us for the first time to Building Windows 10 Games with Unity 5. Uh, this module, we're going to be talking about coding, AI, and a little bit of the mobile input controls that they have in the standard asset packs. So some really easy way to get up and running with mobile uh, controls. Expect a lot of laughter in this one. Laughter. Laughter. Very, laughter. Very, right. very entertaining. Here also again with my good friend Mark from Unity, who's going to be my sidekick throughout this module. I am. We have Matt uh, as a heckler in the background there. Hey, yeah, we're also, that. by the way, we're also gonna, gonna give you guys a link to win a free Ooh. Unity Pro license at the end of this all. So for those that are live watching it right now, Mark's gonna give a link to win a free Unity Pro. Yeah. 
can we cut off and I just go to that link? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in this module, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit of coding, uh, coin pickup, zombie score, level death, um, how to put a border on a level, essentially how to detect when you've gone off a level, some of the input and mobile input, and uh, just some rudimentary basic AI. So on the coding side, the typical process for most of the code that you write is very, very similar. Uh, anytime you want to detect a collision with something, it's either you're, you're using a what's called a collide or a trigger, which we're going to look at. Um, when that collision happens in code, you will call your code method and then you increment some variable. Like the process is extremely simple. It's template code that you use pretty much all the time. Uh, in this project that you can download, um, you'll see that there's going to be a player score component. And uh, at lunchtime here, we're going to break. You're going to be able to find the code. Everything that we're showing is going to be out on github.com, Adam Tulipper. Uh, my repositories, though, I will make this public. You're going to see the Vamp Kid 3D project out there. So that is where you're going to find it, is where you can find all my stuff is uh, out on GitHub. So github.com forward slash Adam Tuliper, Vamp Kid 3D. If you go right now, you won't see Vamp Kid 3D. Again, at lunchtime, I will uh, make that public. So that will be coming up very shortly here. If you're watching this, the recorded version, it will already be live. Uh, simply a variable that we're going to use to track our inventory, in other words, our coin score. And uh, there's some challenges of uh, UI and rotation, and I'll talk about that with how we're going to do something cool in the coin pickup. Uh, we're going to look at the zombie score, and again, it's template code. We're, we have some variable we're going to update, and we're going to check that when we hit, in other words, when we collide with a player, we're going to tell someone about it. Again, it's template code. Visual Studio Tools for Unity will actually generate the method signature for you. Um, but the idea is that in coding in Unity, when you want to do near anything, um, if you want to communicate with other objects, you ask Unity for a reference to those objects. And so notice this code sample here. Um, assume this is the zombie, and the zombie wants to know um, how to alter the player's score. So the zombie, when the zombie wakes up, not wakes up from the dead, but when, uh, when Unity wakes the zombie up, well, I guess it's kind of waking up from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> you call game object dot find game object with tag. And if you recall, when we talked about tags on a game object, uh, let's look at the zombies, for example. Now, Matt was uh, appreciating these green prototype zombies. He made these green prototype zombies, and he's actually made a, a much cooler looking zombie. This is, this is a prototype zombie. Uh, when we resume after lunch, you guys will see a final zombie, which looks a lot better than this guy. But on any particular game object, you have a tag that you can assign. Uh, you don't have to, but you can, and you can assign your own custom tags here as well. You can add super zombie, just for example, if you wanted to do that. You have some built-in ones by default, and if you look at um, a common one is player. So Unity provides a few of these by default because people use them all the time. They don't have any special meaning. It's, they're, they're saying, hey, uh, we realize that a lot of folks will use these, so we're just going to give them there by default. If you want your own, uh, you can make new ones. You don't have to use any of them. But this is the common way that you ask Unity. Game object dot find game object or game objects. There's a, an API called an S. Game object with tag player, and that will look through all of the game objects that have a tag set, and then find the one for player. This is a pretty fast operation. I wouldn't do something like this every frame, but it's it's perfectly okay to call when that object starts up. That's when you ask for references. In other words, the zombie wakes up, says, "Hey, I want a reference to player that I can use later on." So that's what your kind of code that you're seeing here. Okay, let's look at some score code here, and we're going to do our. Uh, uh, no coin level on this. So we have a couple scenes that are going to be set up that you'll find in the demo project here. And we have uh, main no coin. Let's run this. There's the audio you may or may not have been able to hear before. And notice, I hit this coin, nothing happens. So let me just fall to my doom there. All right. Now, this coin, there's some code we can assign to this, and we'll walk through it. The idea on any object you want to pick up is that you want a collider on that object. So if I look at this coin, and notice I don't have anything there yet. As such, I walked right through that. Let me collapse these just so my view is a little bit cleaner for you here, those watching this. Um, there's no collider here. So there's two things to note. If I want physics on an object, I have a collider. So if I have a cube, for example, 
And let's just scale this cube out, make it visible. So this cube has a box collider. In other words, I could actually fall on top of this cube. Um, it, I can run into this cube. I, 